we will talk about zip bound new weight loss medication which was approved in 2023 and it gained popularity because it's high effectiveness and high safety profile main action of the bound is reduce appetite and slows down gastric emptying it means that person eats less naturally because feels full longer period of time and intakes less calories and weight loss occurs and effectiveness was 22 percent body mass loss in 18 months it's considered very important and very high rate of weight loss for weight loss medication that's why it gained so much popularity even it's too expensive uh, it's self-injectable drug uh, it's like pen and you should inject it once a week so it it has long lasting effect now let's say mechanism of action how it affects our body and if it has important limitations zip bound is called dual incretin agonist what it means incretin means hormones which are produced by our digestive system by our intestines intestines produces hormones and zip bound looks like or mimic two types of hormone one is glucagon like peptide one and second is glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide so in short uh, glp1 and gip uh, these two hormones are natural and our body produces them when we eating so zip bound effect looks like the process when we eating food and what and what is doing first is especially glucagon like peptide one slows gastric emptying and food lasts longer in our gastric it means slows down absorption process person feels full longer period of time and also glucose spikes is prevented because absorption is slow so glucose rise in the blood is slow another is they bought glucagon like peptide and glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide both stimulate insulin production by beta cells on pancreas so pancreas is stimulated that's important action and then this is we can say that it's the main action of this medication but weight loss weight loss effect is because of slows down gastric emptying major part of slow uh, weight loss is because of this but most important action is increased insulin secretion increased insulin secretion means uh, more effective metabolism of glucose and another action is decrease glucagon secretion by pancreas also and glucagon secretion decreased glucagon secretion means that our liver does not produce glucose from glycogen so uh, our liver does not produce glucose from glycogen it's very important point also because we have some degree of glucose in the blood and when liver adds more glucose glucose level goes up and we have glucose spikes and when glucagon uh, secretion is decreased uh, glycogen conversion to glucose is decreased and we have no glucose spikes in the blood also insulin is also very important player of course and it also decreases glucose level in the blood uh, that's why we have this combined effect and that's why this um, medication is very effective because it has several important uh, targets uh, it, it does not act only 
uh, with only one mechanism it uh, affects our organs by uh, um, affecting several targets that's why it's so effective so slowing down gastric emptying uh, increase insulin secretion decrease glucose uh, gl gly uh, glucagon secretion and also uh, it increase fat oxidation in liver and in muscles also because fat oxidation is increased our body starts uh, burning ketone bodies uh, which is produced by liver and it, it increase energy expenditure and metabolic rate our body so uh, zip bound slows down gastric emptying increase insulin secretion decrease glucagon secretion and and increase fat oxidation and increase energy expenditure and metabolic rate so person starts burning more calories even in resting uh, position uh, we have this combined effects and also uh, glucagon like peptide increases glucose transport and protein which facilitates glucose uptake so improves insulin sensitivity and improves glucose metabolism that's how combined effect we have now let's say about indications most important indication is bmi 40 and more uh, it's already morbid obesity also indication is bmi more than 35 but comorbid condition for example bmi 35 and diabetes bmi 35 and cardiovascular disease or risk of cardiovascular disease or um, altered lipid profile or kidney disease or other disease comorbid conditions bmi plus comorbid conditions or bmi 40 and more and people who has diabetes diabetes mellitus type 2 even they have lower uh, bmi so um there's question that uh, why why i need to have 35 uh, bmi to intake this drug and because it's a new drug because we have no long term uh, long term results from studies how it affects our body and we should measure risk and benefits and if there is high risks we can intake this new drug because it has high safety profile profile on short term but we don't know what will be in long term but it's likely that this medication will be safe in long term also why will be safe because uh, because it mimics it acts like our natural hormones um, glp1 and gip both of them are produced in our body after eating so in taking the bounds looks like you eating and eating and eating so it's more natural process because we every day eating so if and if person has bmi 40 he or she more likely that he or she eating a lot that's why that's why in taking this medication is not very risky at this category because this food and this high bmi is more risky and here benefits are more but if person for example has bmi 27 it's more than 25 so it's already higher overweight but here risks potential risks may be higher than benefits that's why it's not recommended for people who has bmi 27 but it's possible that time will come and it will be approved and indication will be this um, lower BMI also if we will have enough evidences that um, the bound is effective in long term and safe in long term and now let's say what is main limitations first and most important limitation is high cost it cost uh, one thousand dollar per month monthly dosage of course there is some um, possibilities that um, insurance covers it 
but yes in america it's possible but in many countries uh, it, it will not be covered by uh, insurance that's why um, higher co high cost is very important limitation um, another important limitation is limited data for long-term safety as we said because we don't know what will be in future uh, but uh, my personal opinion is that it will be safe um, it will be safe generally may uh, i'm afraid of um, pancreatic cancer if pan if it can increase uh, risk of pancreatic cancer because uh, very likely that it activates pancreas but eating food also activates pancreas so um, i think it will be if there, there will not be important risk of pancreatic cancer or uh, pancreatitis then it will be safe in long term also i think um, and uh, abdominal discomfort is also some limitation for some people like diarrhea vomiting and uh, constipation and nausea uh, but these symptoms usually are transient and temporary and mild and it's not a big problem for many people especially this medication is injectable once a week so that's not big problem but uh, problem is long-term safety and problem is cost uh, from my view of course uh, and contraindications are pancreatitis uh, pancreatitis because it activates pancreas it uh, increases level of pancreas enzymes that's why if a person has pancreatitis uh, this increased production of pancreas enzymes um, in increase inflammation and exacerbate condition and multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome or men syndrome uh, it's rare disease and uh, there is um, there is concerns that it can stimulate uh, growth of um, tumor cells that's why it should be avoided if person has uh, multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome uh, that's all i wanted to say thank you for your interest uh, thank you for your watching if you like my videos please thumbs up if you like my channel please subscribe thank you very much bye for now